really thought about it and I wanted to just, uh, I put a lot of effort into it to come something creative. So I came up with this creative title called Happy Father's Day. <laughs> All right, so in this today's message, there's two principles that we're going to talk about, okay? Just two principles. And with these two principles, it's going to help you to make your father a better father. So this message is a little bit different than normal, okay? Uh, but this can be uh, helpful for even your mother. So right? help your mother be a better, better mother. Help your children be better children. And it's going to help your friends to be better friends. Help your boss to be a better boss, right? That's a good one, right? We want to always have a better boss. Except my employees at work, they know I'm the best, so they're not going to want, they're not going to want that. But uh, with these two principles, if you really stick to these principles, it can affect the people around you, okay? So we're going to go right into the message. Uh, the first point I want to uh, make is the principle of honoring. The principle of honoring. So if you need a Bible, we have some Bibles in the back. We'll have the verses on the screen. Of course, you have your Bible, and we also have the Bible app. So Mark chapter 6, verse 1 through 5, he says, he, he went away from there and came to his hometown. Now this should be a good day for Jesus, right? Coming back home where he grew up, where he was raised. So this should be good. Came to his hometown and the disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, something he always did. And many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter? So this kind of goes not good for the people of his hometown. Because um, they're kind of almost putting him down when they call him just a carpenter. Then they say the son of Mary. They're not even acknowledging his father, because back then it was usually you were the, the son of your father, not the son of your mother. So he said, the son of Mary and the brother James and Hoses and Judas and Simon. And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, a prophet is without honor except in his hometown and among his relatives and in his own household. And he could do no mighty works there except that he had laid his hand on a few sick people and he healed them. Now this shocks me. This is the man of God. And he's limited by dishonor. Right? In other words, he's in a place that they're not honoring him. And because of that, he can't do mighty works. This is Jesus, the creator of the universe. Right? I mean, everything exists through Jesus. You know, you have Jesus in this city. And I remind you, he's done many mighty works wherever he's gone. But he's in the city where he was raised. And scripture says that he could not do mighty works there because they did not honor him. So in this passage, there's two things that cause this honor, which is for us is good to know if you want to know if you're honoring somebody or not. Um, so two things. The first one is familiarity. Right. The root word here is family. A lot of people, when it comes to this verse, they always remember a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown. But they always forget the last two, where it says, and among his relatives and in his own household. Pretty much in his own familia, right? In his own house. They're like, we, we know this guy, right? You want me to honor this guy? But I know him on his bad day. You want me to honor this guy? But I know how he is behind closed doors. And for some of you, you can relate to this because you've grown so much. You've changed so much from the person you were before Christ. But when it comes to your family, they still see you as that person from a long time ago, right? The other thing is offenses. In the King James Version, they say they were offended by him, right? If you are offended of someone, you will never honor that person, right? You need to clear up that offense, right? That person uh, has to be forgiven. Even if what that person did is worthy of being um, of offended, that doesn't give us the right as believers because we are supposed to forgive as God has forgiven us. Amen. Now, this is amazing to me because if this honor hinders Jesus from doing mighty works, is it possible that this honor is going to hinder a person in your life from doing mighty works? So, today's Father's Day, right? I'm a father, I'm a man, right? So I want to speak on behalf of the men for a second, okay? So I'm going to try to tell you, ladies, in a way that, that maybe you won't laugh, but let me tell you the truth. It's tough to be a man, okay? 
it's tough. See, some of you are smiling right here. It's tough to be a man, okay? Let me explain to you why, right? We're confused, okay? We get confused, all right? Because we don't know what you want, all right? And we're constantly getting confused because we're not sure. Do you want us to be tough or do you want us to be sensitive, right? Tough or sensitive? And when and which one do you want us to do, right? I mean, my wife, I love my wife, but she'll say things to me that really confuse me. She'll tell me when I get home and say things like, I don't tell you my problems so you can solve them. <laughs> I'm like, what? What do you mean? That's what I do, right? I'm your husband. I am uh, the man of the house. I do this for a living as a manager at work. People bring me their problems and I fix them. So what do you mean? She says, no, I just want you to listen. Can you just listen to me? That's all I want you to do is listen. And that's against everything I want to do. I want to just give her advice, right? I want to fix her problems. But I say, okay, I'll just listen. And I'll listen for like 20 to 40 minutes. <laughs> and when it's all said and done, she'll say, well, why aren't you talking? You told me to listen to you. That's what you said. Something else she'll tell me is if I get home from work, she'll say, I guess I'm going to wash the dishes. I'm like, okay, are you implying that you want me to wash the dishes? Or are you just telling me that you're going to wash the dishes, right? Because you know that's not one of my top five things, to, favorite things to do in the house. And I think some ladies, y'all do this on purpose, too, because we get confused. We don't know what you want. We'll get home from work. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We all get dressed up right before we get out the door, and then you'll just look at us and say, you going to wear that? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I was just going to go outside and check the mail <laughs> and then come back inside and change before we went out, right? I mean, we don't know what you want. And that, or you, you get home from work and you'll look at it and say, did you, did you wear that? Uh, no, I, I, I changed in the car <laughs> before I got home, right? And if we say, yes, this is what I wear, it should say, all day? <laughs> of course all day. Who saw you? Really? Does that matter who saw me? And some of you will even go to a close friend or a family member, and you'll go up to that person, and you'll look at them, and look at what they're wearing, and say, huh, I guess Duran is out of town, huh? Really? Just because I'm dressed? Does I look that dirty to you? So because this message, I asked Duran this question, I go, because I know I'm not a fashion guru, I know that, but I have my own style. I believe I have a pretty okay style when I like to wear. Things cool, but I asked Brenda. So, so would you, if I allowed you to change me, pick my clothes for me, and buy the clothes, would you do it? She goes, huh? Never thought about that. Yeah, I think I would. If I had, if I had the time and I had the money, I would do it. And of course, I started thinking, wait a second, hold on. So you're, what you're telling me is going to cost it's going to cost money and more time to make me look better? Are you kidding me? Really? But I'm telling you, we don't know what you want. And uh, and this is something else. After being married many years, what's going to happen? You're going to have a grown man coming out of the closet with his pants and shirt and telling his wife, "Should I wear this? Should I, should I wear this? Is, does this match my shoes or not?" And of course, your wife's going to be like, it's okay, baby, just, just sit down on the bed. It's okay, just sit down on the bed. <laughs> and next thing you know, you're going to be sitting on the bed with your other children. Everybody's going to be in the underwear thinking, oh, today our, my mom's going to dress us up. Yeah, mom's going to get us ready. That's right, mom's getting ready. Again, we get confused. And this is the end here. Then you'll come to us, you'll come to us wearing two different shoes, two different colored shoes. And then you'll ask us, which one should I wear? Are you kidding me? I'm in my underwear. Does it look like I know how to dress myself? I mean, what do you want me to say, right? And that's a tough question. And some of you that just got married, you probably think you have a 50-50 shot, but honestly, the odds are against you, okay? It's really, you have to be married for a long time. And I've been married for 16 years, and I think I finally have the answer to that question, right? When your wife asks you which shoe I should wear. Because, uh, and I'm going to tell you the truth, she really, my wife, when she asked me this, she really doesn't want my opinion. She already already picked the shoe that she wants to wear. She already made up her mind. She just wants confirmation. That's all she wants. Because at first, I, when I was young, I would tell her, you know, should I wear the white or the blue? Wear the white. Okay, I'll go with the blue. <laughs> really? Black or white? Go with the black. No, I'll go with the white. 
why do you even ask me, right? But again, it took many years, so I finally got the answer. So some of you that are going to get married in the future, or you're young and married, here's the answer. When your wife asks you which shoe you're going, she wants to wear, you do two, one of the two things. Okay, you get your hand like this, and you just do this. You go... If you, can you turn to this side of the angle and see the shoes? All right, let me look at the other one at this angle here. By that time, she's going to get impatient, and she's going to just obviously tell you, I think I'm going to go with the yellow one. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing, yellow. And you're not lying, right? Because as soon as she said yellow, you thought yellow, right? Or I, I got better at this. I kind of went more direct with my wife, and she said, so which one, the yellow or blue? And I said, well, they both look great on you. Which one are you leaning to? I'm going with the blue. Yeah, me too. I think go with that one, right? I'm telling you, right? I mean, that's how it is when you get married. But listen, let me give you a little secret for the ladies also. Let me add some more here. So I hope you understand. When it comes to the men, okay? Hey guys, I got to be honest here. When it comes to the men, we're, we're kind of like dogs. Not in a bad sense, in a way sense that doesn't take much to make us happy, okay? If you just give us a little praise and treat, all right? Give us a little praise every once in a while. Give us a treat. Praise, treat. And if you do this, I'm telling you, you're going to be able to train us. It's not going to take much, all right? It might take us three weeks when we get something right. And it might take us the 20th time that you tell us to get this right. But if you give us a little praise when we do something right, you say, well, who's a good boy? That's right, who's a good boy, all right? Who picked the clothes off the floor? Who took the clothes out of the dryer? You did, didn't you? It's all it takes, I'm telling you. Just give us a little praise and give us a little truth. Because they did a survey on the men. And the number one thing, number one need for men is honor. It is. It's honor. All right? And some of you might think, well, I think there's one above honor. Actually, sex is number two. All right? Sex is number two. Number one is honor. Number two, when it comes to our need, is sex. Now, they did a survey for women as well. Okay, and one day I'm going to ask God, you know, and how does this work? Because when they did the survey for the women, sex was number 13. <laughs> number 12 was gardening. Really? <laughs> gardening was number 12? How does that work, God, right? All right, before we go into the next principle, let me share you another verse here. Uh, Ephesians 6, verse 2 to 3. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 2 and 3. It says this, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. So a lot of people, when they hear this verse, they, they just focus on that live a long life, right? If you're obedient to your parents, you live a long life. But it says may, you may live a long life. But there's another promise here. It says you, it may go well with you. And there's a lot of people in this world that things are not going well, and it could be because they're not, being, they're not honoring their parents. So when you honor your father, okay, it may change a lot of things what happens to your life. Let me give you an example. Noah, uh, of course, we all know the story of Noah, right? He was one of the last righteous men. God asked him to build an ark, and he did. It rained for 40 days, right? And after 150 days, the water started succeeding down. And then when Noah got out of the ark with all the animals... He got drunk, and in his tent, he got drunk, and he was in his birthday suit, okay? And one of his sons came in the tent, and he saw him, and he mocked him. And he went to tell his two other brothers. And the two other brothers came in, and they covered their dad's nakedness. And they walked backwards, leaving the tent, with their face looking down to not see their father's nakedness. Scripture says that the one son that mocked him, he was cursed for pretty much the rest of his life. The two other sons, they were blessed, right? See, how you treat people, it's going to affect you, especially when it comes to honoring or not honoring your parents, okay? All right, so the second principle I want to go over is the principle of receiving, right? The principle of receiving. So Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse 40 to 41 it says this, whoever receives you, now he's talking to the disciples, so he's telling the disciples, whoever receives you, receives me. And whoever receives me, receives him who sent me, right? God the Father. The one who receives a prophet because he's a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And the one who receives a righteous person because he's a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. So again, this is a principle 
It's a principle of receiving here. So again, he says, if you receive a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. If you receive a righteous man, you get a righteous man's reward. If you receive Jesus, you get the Father, right? Now the question is, how do I receive, right? Well, that shouldn't be hard for us because we, we, we're good at receiving, right? We get a lot of gifts throughout our lives. What's hard for us is giving. That's the hard one to give. So again, the principle of receiving is that, right? The principle of receiving is receive a person in your life as God's perfect gift to you, okay? The principle of receiving is receive a person in your life as God's perfect gift to you. Now, they might not be perfect, and I get that, but they're perfect for you. Okay, they're perfect. So when you receive someone as God's perfect gift to you, ready? It releases them to be all that God intended them to be in your life. Okay, it releases them to be all that God intended them to be in your life. But if you don't receive them, then they're not going to be all what God intended them to be in your life. The perfect example of this is Jesus. Jesus, John chapter 1 verse 12, look what he says here. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right, meaning authority and power, to become children of God. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, right, he gave you the right to become a child of God. I don't know about you, but I'll never get tired of telling Jesus, thank you for doing that for me, right? Jesus has all the power, right? We know he has all the power to heal. He has all the power to forgive, all the power to save, all the power to set people free. But, no, but none of that power is going to help you unless you receive Jesus, right? Because if you don't receive Jesus, then Jesus can't be all that God intended him to be in your life. But if you do receive Jesus, then you're releasing him. You're allowing Jesus to be all that God intended him to be in your life. That's why when he went to his hometown, right? And when he went to his hometown, they didn't receive him as a son of God. They received him as a carpenter, right? They saw a carpenter. They received him as a carpenter. And because they didn't receive him as a son of God, Jesus couldn't be the son of God to them. You see that? So again, when you receive someone as God's perfect gift to you, all right, and remember, I know they're not perfect, but they're perfect for you. You are releasing that person to be all that God intended them to be in your life. Again, this works for husbands, all right? This works for wives, right? This works for children to be better children. This works for friends to be better friends. And again, it works for bosses to be better bosses. Some of you might have a job and a boss that you really don't like, that you really hate working there. Right? But you imagine if you actually go to God and pray to God and say, God, I accept this person as a perfect gift from you and see what happens. Because the people that don't do this, all they do is find themselves another similar job with another similar boss, with the same issues, the same problems. Nothing changes. Right? Now, husbands, let me speak to you for a second. If you accept your wife as a perfect gift from God. It's a game changer. I mean, you're supposed to be one, right? You and your wife are supposed to be one. And when she accepts you and you accept her as a perfect gift from God, it's going to affect everything, all right? Your communication, your relationship, your work. You're going to have peace. You're going to have joy. It's going to do so much in your life, right? So I want you to think about it this way. Let's say God will take, and I'm going to say a woman, and I don't mean this in a bad way, okay? Just an analogy, okay? Uh, so just humor now, because we can switch the roles here, but just to say, for in this case, God takes a woman, a woman that believes that the orbit, the earth will stop orbiting if she stops talking, okay? <laughs> takes that person and joins her with a man that for him to agree to say yes, all he does, it gives you a grunt or gives you a head nod. And that's it, right? You've seen that, right? Or God takes a woman that when a meeting starts at 1045, that means she's going to be there at 1030. Joins that woman 
with the man over here, same scenario, right? Me starts at 1045, that means I gotta leave the house at 1045, right? Because there's a magical portable in front of my house, I'll get there in a few seconds, right? Am I lying? You see that. But listen, the point of this is he's perfect for you. She is perfect for you, right? So let me give you two more words when it comes to receiving. Unconditional acceptance. Unconditional acceptance. This is what you said many years ago when you got married, okay? If you remember, you said, I accept you for better or worse, right? I accept you for better or worse. So if she makes your life, if you makes your life worse, guess what? You're going to stick by her until death, right? Ain't going to change. But if you accept her as God's perfect gift to you, again, it's going to change everything. Accept her and not reject her. Accept him and not reject uh, him, right? Here's another one. I receive you in richer or poor, in sickness and in health. Now, guys, I got to be honest here, right? We should be very happy in that sickness and health because when it comes to being sick, we're one of the biggest babies in the world, right? If you ever talk to my wife, Dorinda, and the subject of kids starts coming up and I start talking about kids getting sick, my name's going to pop up, I promise you. She'll say, well, Christian, he, he makes the kids go to school unless they're throwing up or bleeding, have a fever, they're going to school. But when Christian gets sick, <laughs> he's a big baby, right? And I'm not lying to you. Yes, I am a big baby when I get sick. But I only get sick once or twice a year, okay? But I love my wife. All I can tell her is you said the words, right? Better or worse, right? You accepted me, and I'm glad you did. When you also re when you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you were baptized, you receive the Holy Spirit. And when you receive the Holy Spirit, you release the Holy Spirit to be all that God intended the Holy Spirit to be in your life. And for some of us, that's a lot of work, but that's okay, because you know why? The Holy Spirit has the power, the Holy Spirit has many has to wear, and we need the help of the Holy Spirit. I love my wife because honestly, she honored me even when I was dishonored. She accepted me when she could have rejected me. And she teaches my kids the same thing, right? Because listen, I, I mess up with my kids. I blow it sometimes. I say things I shouldn't say. But she'll tell the kids, listen to your father. He's a good man. You need to honor your father. Listen to me, church. My brothers and sisters, you need to honor and receive the people that God has put in your life so you can release them to be all that God intended them to be in your life, okay? So let me, I'm going to do something different to end today's message, okay? I want you to just close your eyes for a second. Go ahead and close your eyes. I want you to think, what is the Holy Spirit trying to tell you this morning? What, what is the Holy Spirit trying to speak in your life when it comes to who you need to honor, who you need to receive this morning? And maybe it has nothing to do with today's message. Maybe there's something else. Because listen, at the end of service, it is a time to worship, but it's also a time for you to bring the things that you struggle with, to bring them to Jesus, bring them to Him. I will be up here praying if you need prayer. Maybe it's financing. Maybe it's your marriage you need to bring to him. Maybe it's the sins that you're struggling with. Maybe it's your children. Maybe it's your job. Maybe it's your boss. Whatever issues that you are struggling, whatever is holding you back to walk closer to Jesus, things that you put before God, you need to give those things up. And now's the time to do it, to bring it to the altar to Jesus. Let me pray us back into worship. Father God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, I just, I just pray for the church right now, Lord, that you will give them courage, you will give them boldness, that you will open their hearts, that the Holy Spirit 
convict them of whatever is going on. Don't let pride get in the way. Let them bring their issues because we're sick. We're all sick. We're all sinners. We're not perfect. And you know that. I just pray that bring it to us, bring it to you this morning, Lord. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.